The true age of the Sun and its orbiting planets is perhaps four and a half billion years and subject to revision. This particular microscopic solar system most probably has at least that long again to run its fiery course. The life expectancy of our Sun is a solid five billion more years. However, mark your calendar, at around that point, it will emulate millions of other suns and explosively mutate into a swollen red giant, causing the Earth's oceans to boil and extinguishing all possibility of life in any form. No description by any prophet or visionary has even begun to picture the awful intensity and irrevocability of that moment.
Over billions of years on a unique sphere, chance has painted a thin covering of life, complex, improbable, wonderful, and fragile. Suddenly, we humans, a recently arrived species, no longer subject to the checks and balances inherent in nature, have grown in population, technology, and intelligence to a position of terrible power. We now wield the paintbrush.
from the, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. More power to you. You may be lonely, but more power to you. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in, and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin, if you could hear, at every jolt, the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest, to children ardent for some desperate glory, the old lie, dulce et decorum est, pro patria mori. accumulated dangerous evolutionary baggage, propensities for aggression and ritual, submission to leaders, hostility to outsiders, all of which puts our survival in some doubt. And we've also acquired compassion for others, love for our children, a desire to learn from history and experience, and a great soaring, passionate intelligence, the clear tools for our continued survival and prosperity. Which aspects of our nature will prevail is uncertain, particularly when our visions and prospects are bound to one small part of the small planet Earth. But up there in the cosmos, an inescapable perspective awaits. Paine alto kata elintarvike osaston hyllyt. Tuli meri pyyhkäisee, katon kautta lattiaan. Kalatiskin lasi pirstoo, joudu valoin somistetun takaseinän. Nousee tukahtunut huuto, shakkia lansavun takaa. Palavat ruumiit, avun huudot jaittuu. Hälytys, ajoneuvojen kirkuvat pillit ja valot. Sekä sortoja panikki, 
Keskustan kauppakeskuksen raunioilla. Punainen risti, pommiryhmä ja kaupungin väki evakoivat ja raivaavat ruumita kiviä, lasia ja pussi. Jouluaatto hautautuu. Voin arvetti kynttilöihin ja lumeen.
we are the only intelligent beings in the galaxy, we should make sure we survive and continue. Our only chance of long-term survival is not to remain inward-looking on planet Earth, but to spread out into space.
since in the long run, every planetary society will be endangered by impacts from space. Every surviving civilization is obliged to become spacefaring. Not because of exploratory or romantic zeal, but for the most practical reason imaginable, staying alive. And once you're out there in space for centuries, for millennia, your species has been pried loose from its cradle. If our long-term survival is at stake, we have a basic responsibility to our species to venture to other worlds. Sailors on a becalmed sea, we sense the stirring of the breeze. to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood, and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the seas. 